What's up everybody? So I've been working on this project with a client and right now I'm doing some work with drums. A couple years ago I bought a package with Steven Slate drums and Steven Slate trigger at the same time. I've used SSD a couple times to do actual drum programming. Really like it, highly recommend it. Um, but I hadn't had a lot of time to mess with trigger. Uh, I've had Drumagog for a really long time. Actually, I looked back at the website to see when I bought it. I bought it in 2011, so I've been using it for quite a while. And uh, I loaded up Trigger to, to use it on this session and immediately noticed some pretty big differences between the two and thought, hey, this would be a good opportunity to make a video and tell you guys the big differences between them uh, so you guys can make a decision for yourselves or maybe you already have made a decision you just want a little bit more information. This is not gonna be a full tutorial. I'm just gonna kind of highlight the big differences between the two that I've noticed with just um, using them and kind of doing a deep dive into Trigger in the last few days. So make sure you guys stick around to the end though because there's actually a few things in here that shocked me a little bit and I think you guys may be surprised how, uh, how it ends up. So stick around to the end. All right, let's get right into it though. So. Again, making my own samples. Uh, first, I have to say a point goes to Drumagog on this one because you create your samples actually in the plugin. So if I wanted to do that, I would just go over here and I would, where is it? New Gog. I would create a new Gog. It's gonna ask me, there we go. What do I wanna title? I'm gonna title it Demo. I've already created that when I was messing around, so we're gonna record over it. All right, so you navigate to your folder with all your samples. You'll see it here I have a whole bunch of different velocities. That's the V, and then R is round robin. Um, and then I have the, the top mic, overhead, room one and room two on each hit. And that highlights something that's really great about Drumagog is that you can actually put all of these different sounds within a single sample. I'll show you what that looks like. First, I'm going to start with my top snare. So I'm going to grab all of these different round robins, drag them in there. Bam! There you go. Now you have a little sample set. Obviously, you'd want to do that with all of these, but for the sake of brevity. And then if I say want to bring in my room mic, again, I took this from a session. This is the same hit, right? So the same hit on the top, uh, top mic, same hit on the overhead in the rooms. Say I want to pair this, I would just go over here, drag it onto that existing sample, and it says, where do you want to put it? Oh, I'll put it in my room one slot. And now, when you go back and you're replacing the, uh, the snare hits, or you're creating your sample track, you have this fader with room one, you can blend that in or out, which is awesome. So you can have a completely like phase coherent sample track with top, you could put bottom mic in there, you could put overhead, you could put all kinds of things. Super cool. But then you go to compress it and you're like, oh wait, this immediately loses all of its usefulness because now I'm compressing my overhead and my room uh, with my, my close mic on my snare. So it can be cool if you use it the right way, but um, if they had made it to where you could actually output onto different different tracks within your, in your DAW, it would have been amazing. Um, but it all comes out into one track. So that's actually one thing that I was hoping that Trigger would do because with Steven Slate Drums, uh, the, the programming plugin, you can pull in the whole kit and output it into different tracks on your DAW. And I was kind of hoping Trigger would do the same, but you can't. So if you bring in you know, different samples here, 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 then it's all going to be blended together just like Drumagog. So let's look at what you have to do to create a, a sample real quick and Trigger. You actually have to pull up a separate program, which I already have open, called Trigger Instrument Editor. Now it gives you these different velocities, which you can change up here, and then your different round robins, which you can create up here. And then it's fairly simple, you know, you just kind of drag and drop. Um, you cannot pair different sounds together or anything like that. Um, so it's very straightforward, just drag and drop things in there. And then over here you have your velocity level. So this calculates the velocity of the hit according to a, a MIDI 
scale, which is zero through 127. So that's what these numbers indicate over here. I want you to remember this because I'm going to refer to it later. Um, th this kind of shows you yeah, that what separates one velocity from the next. Let's go ahead and look at some of the basic controls. So I'm going to real quick load up my regular uh, samples here. All right, so here is my sample set that I created. I already have it loaded within Trigger. So a lot of the same uh, parameters here, they're called different things, but that's all semantics. It doesn't really matter. They all do the same thing. So sensitivity over here, this controls the threshold. Um, at what point does the sample actually trigger? So just we'll, we'll take a look at that real quick. Right, so when the transient hits this threshold, it triggers the sample. Same thing over here, except it's called detail, right? This is your threshold. Uh, you got retrigger, it's the same thing as your resolution. Basically, how quickly after the first hit will it register another hit? And uh, for things like flams, rolls, etc., you want it to be really quick, right? Because the, the hits are really tight. So you want to have that as fast as possible. I, I generally leave mine as fast as possible. Uh, and then you have transient detail here, which is basically the same thing as sensitivity. Sensitivity doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I read the manual, but basically if you have the threshold set so that it's just hitting the loud snare hits, but not hitting the kick hits, but then you have like ghost notes that are even below the kick hits. If you crank the sensitivity, it will work together with the detail to pick up those ghost notes and not pick up the kick. I don't know how it does that magic, but that's what the manual says. You have, um, over here again, you can blend together all kinds of different samples. Let's go over to the curves menu. You have here, uh, ASR, that's uh, attack, sustain, release. You know, you may be used to seeing envelope or ADSR, uh, attack, decay, sustain, release. Uh, I don't typically use this. Um, and then you have the big controls, which is the dynamics and the velocity and the range. So dynamics, this is going to control how much you're matching the original performance. If you have it at 100%, it's going to match the exact velocity of the original drum performance. Over here on Drumagog, uh, if we go to settings, we will see the same thing over here. We have dynamics. Um, this is unique to trigger this velocity control so if you feel like just overall he played too soft you can bring the value above 50 and it will add velocity to each hit or you can bring it below 50 if you want to reduce the velocity of each hit if you think he played too loud for the whole song now <clears throat> this is this one is, is really big and i really want to highlight this remember when i told you to pay attention to those numbers earlier in the instrument editor software that's where range comes in right so it's zero to 127 oh wrong way zero to 127. so real quick let's take a look at drumagog go to the groups <clears throat> this is what i love about drumagog is that so I created a sample set with three different velocities. It shows me the three different velocities here. And then as the transients come through, it shows you exactly which velocity it's hitting. And so what I like to do is like on a verse, I will take three completely out and make it so that it's only with velocities one and two. And then I'll go to maybe a really high energy chorus. I'll bring three up there and maybe I'll take one and two completely out. So it's only hitting the highest velocity to make it sound like he's just smacking the crap out of it. And then I'll, I'll track the chorus and the verses separately with the different velocities. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Right, so the transients are coming through and it's showing you exactly where it's hitting. You can also go to samples over here and it will highlight which sample it plays.
Now this is really useful because if you go ahead and create your set of samples and then you keep hearing one sample that you're like, I just don't like that one, which actually happened with this, you can just go in and you can highlight it and then you can delete that one sample. So returning back to trigger, you have to memorize those different velocity values from the instrument editor. So if I wanted to do the same thing, I would have to say, okay, I have a value, or, you know, zero of one to 20, 127, divide that by three. That means my highest velocity starts at what, like 84 or something. Uh, and so I'd have to bring this up to 84. And now it's only hitting the top velocity. But what if you're using a set of samples that you don't, that you didn't create? Uh, I mean, you could probably still open it with an instrument editor, but that's a whole nother step. Now you have to go and look at the different velocities so you can control exactly which velocity that you're triggering. Uh, I really don't like that. Also, it gives you less flexibility. What if you just want to use two and three? I guess I could go down to 42 to 127. I don't know. It's just, it's not as much control as I like. So big point to Drumagog in this one. Uh, let's move on. So there's also suppression and ducking. Uh, they, they're handled a little bit differently, but at the end of the day, they're kind of the same thing. So if you have uh, a kick or something that's triggering your snare sample when you don't want it to, you can put an instance of Drumagog onto the kick, and then you can send that to group A. And then on your snare, you can make it receive from group A, and then it will duck every time. It's kind of like keying on a compressor, right? So it'll, it'll duck all those kick hits so that just your sample is triggering, or just your snare rather, is, is triggering all those samples. Uh, trigger does that as well. It's called suppress. So if you want to use that, you create a stereo bus within your DAW, and then everything you want to trigger a sample, you bus to the left channel. Everything you want to suppress or duck, you bus to the right channel and then you crank the suppress knob up. So same kind of functionality, but they're handled a little bit differently. I guess there's, it's just kind of a personal preference on this one. Um, also worth mentioning is their libraries. So the, the Steven Slate trigger, I mean, that's how Slate got his start, right? Is, is drum samples. So you better believe his library is awesome. You can use almost any sample and it's gonna sound really good. The Drumagog library, it's, it's pretty substantial. It's quite large, but it's a lot of really raw sounds that you can manipulate into something good, but sometimes they're, they're not that great. Uh, I've gotten some really good sounds out of it, but again, with, with Slate, you just you grab anything and you know it's gonna sound awesome. Um, okay, so we went over how it looks. We went over the functionality. What's the most important thing? Of course, how it sounds. So um, with TV trickery, I've already created sample tracks. You know, it's like in the cooking shows where they already have like a, uh, a turkey that's been cooking for three hours. So let's go and take a listen to those. I'm gonna make these inactive real quick. Okay, so this is my actual performance here. And then right here, this is uh, my slate. And then this is Drumagog down here at the bottom. So if we zoom in real close, Let's look at the phase. <clears throat> you can actually see that slate, it gets out of phase here fairly quick, like right here, right here, it's out of phase. Um, whereas the Drumagog version is very phase aligned, um, much more than the slate version. So I, I found that to be kind of surprising. I expected the slate to be a little bit more aligned. However, to be completely fair, when you listen to it, you can't really tell. So let, let's uh, actually go ahead and listen to it. I'm gonna solo the performance and I'm gonna solo the Slate sample track here. Right, so it doesn't sound out of phase. It doesn't sound bad at all. But here is the thing that really blew me away I, I was shocked when I saw this. You guys got to check this out. So I want you to listen to the difference <clears throat> between the slate and the drumagog here real quick. All 
All right, so that's the slate. This is the Drumagog. You hear the difference? It's like, it's like a full semitone off. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I heard it and I was like, wait, what? The pitch is different. Now there are pitch controls within both plugin, but I did not manipulate those at all. Let's, uh, let's listen to the original. And then Slate. And then Drumagog. So the Drumagog samples sound exactly like the perfor performed drum, you know, the actual drum performance, uh, whereas the Slate one sounds lower. And I don't know how that happened. If you guys use Trigger and, I, and you're like, hey Matt, it's because you did it wrong, please leave me a comment, let me know what I did wrong. I promise I followed all the instructions uh, and it just came out lower, so that, that kind of blew me away. That's If you're using something from the library, obviously you're never going to tell. But if you're doing what I'm doing and actually sampling there at the studio, you're going to notice. Not a huge deal, but man, I, I was, I was kind of shocked by that. So the last thing I'm going to go over is the companies. So you have Wave Machine Labs versus Steven Slate Audio. Um, Steven Slate is constantly releasing stuff. They're, they're constantly reiterating. This is actually Trigger 2. Um, I actually emailed them with a support question for something else yesterday, and they replied to me within like two hours. So Steven Slate is a, a really good company. Wave Machine Labs, when I went back to look at when I purchased Drumagog and saw that it was 2011, I saw that I purchased Drumagog 5, which is what I'm still using in 2023. They have not made a new version in at least the last 12 years. There's been a couple updates for compatibility, but to not update your product in like 12 years. And then I looked at their social sites and saw that they don't update and there's like two pictures. Uh, it really made me concerned with the, the ongoing support of Drumagog. So I, I think that's definitely worth taking into consideration. Definite point for, for Trigger on that one. So with all that said, where do I land? Where do I wind up? Okay, so if you came to me and you were like, hey Matt, I want to buy a drum replacement plugin and I'm looking at Drumagog or Trigger. What do you think? I would say simply based on the library and based on the company, go with Trigger, go with Steven Slate. Um, again, you know the support's going to be there. You know they're going to be iterating on the product. Steven Slate's not going anywhere. So I would, I would say go with Trigger. If you were, if you, if you came to me and you said, hey Matt, I have this session. I want you to edit drums for me and get me the, the new drums in three hours. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna bring up Drumagog. Like I've, I've used it for so long and that the extra control is really important to me and, and makes it a little bit more um, easy to use, easy to get what I want out of it. So I hope this has helped you out, you guys. I hope it's given you some more information uh, to make decisions with. Uh, if you have any input, if you have other plugins that you're like, hey, this plugin is way better than the other two, let me know in the comments. I'll check it out. I know there's a lot of other ones out there. I just don't have them. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you want me to look at anything else, and thanks for sticking around. Hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.